CataractCoach.com. Faco without hydrodissection. Here's how an expert manages this case. So why would you want to do a case? Shown here, Dr. Pradeep Mohant from India. But why do a case without hydrodissection? Well, there's certain cases where you want to avoid hydrodissection. Think about it. A posterior polar cataract? What about a patient with a prior intravitreal injection which you suspect has damaged the posterior capsule? Again, you want to avoid hydrodissection. What if they're very weak as long as support and you don't want to put any stress? Again, there are a lot of options here. So why don't we learn all these new techniques? So a little tripan blue dye going inside the eye and time to wash that out and do the capsulorexis. Now, certainly, if you're going to do this case without any hydrodissection, you may want to still consider hydrodelineation and you want to make a sufficiently large capsulorexis. You just don't want that baby capsulorexis. Let's get at least a five millimeter rexis here. So going in here with forceps and getting that rexis going, the tripen blue dye, of course, helped a lot. And what are the other techniques that are used here? So remember the old Kelman Victory V groove can be used to split up a nucleus without doing hydrodissection, without rotating it. But in this case, they're just gonna be phaco chop. Now, because there's no hydrodissection, that step skipped entirely, no hydrodelination either. You're not gonna be able to rotate the nucleus very easily. So cleaning up some anterior cortex here, and the idea here is just to chop right off the bat. And so using that phaco probe, and here comes the chopper or Sinsky hook even. Remember, a good surgeon can chop with almost any instrument. Doesn't have to be a specialized chopper, it can be a Sinsky hook. And here's the chop, and the nucleus is split down the middle. And that's not gonna wanna rotate too much, so you need to chop off another piece, and you can take that one down now, and you just simply pivot the phaco probe to the other side, and you can then chop again. So again, without rotating the nucleus, Here's the Tzinski hook or the chopper buzzing in to the nuclear half, and then it can be chopped into smaller pieces. So now you've effectively removed about half the nucleus just by chopping it, and the remaining hemi-nucleus underneath is actually already split into two pieces. That can now be dialed around because there's a lot more room, and it can be brought outside or brought above the capsule bag. Now, it does tend to rotate now because, remember, all the infusion that's going inside the eye has made that loosen up from the lens capsule. Also, in a case where you have a very dense cataract or a whitish cataract, you may already have liquefaction of the lens cortex, which will make it pretty easy. So here at the end, a little bit of more phaco and the last couple nuclear pieces go down. You can see there's really not a whole lot of cortex that's left here. So nice technique to keep in mind. You never know when you may need it. And you may wonder, why did he come out of the eye with that Sinsky hook or the other second instrument, the chopper? And that's actually to help in the fluidic balance. So remember that there are two sources of fluid outflow, what you aspirate through the phaco probe plus what you lose through incisions, whereas there's only one source of inflow, of course, that's from your balanced salt solution infusion line. So there's the capsular bag being inflated a little bit with this elastic, now using a Simcoe cannula to remove the lens cortex. There's a little bit of cortex, you can see that's cleaned up pretty nicely. A Little bit of capsule polishing, if you desire, and then the new lens can be implanted. And he's made his pair of these a little bit on the larger side so he can go in through the side port to remove the sub-incisional lens cortex as well. And then finally here at the end of the case, it's cleaned up pretty nicely. You can do a hydro implantation or you can put more viscoelastic in. Looks like he's using HPMC, which is hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. Commonly available in the USA is Occucoat uh, from Baal and that's a very useful one. So it looks like here, hydro implantation. So using the infusion port in the left hand to keep the eye inflated. So no need for viscoelastic in the bag. And now the eye well can be delivered pretty easily. And that looks good. Single piece acrylic lens going in the capsule bag. So nice technique if you ever need to do a, a technique of this, which is removing a lens nucleus without using any hydrodissection. Just know that you can. Just remember back to these videos. Think about this chop technique, which worked well, the Kelman V-groove, using a pre-chopper, all kinds of neat options there. Thanks for watching.